Hey guys, YouTuber100 here. Alright, and now continuing Nick Jelidian with another Nickelodeon movie review. This is my review of the Wild Thornberries movie. So this was like the this was the first Nickelodeon movie that critics really did like love. I mean, the critics really did like go nuts over this movie. I mean, the movie has an 80 percent score on the tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, critics really did love this movie, but once again, the audience reception for it is kind of mixed. Yeah. As far as how I felt about the movie. Uh, I felt that the movie was okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, this probably yeah. This really isn't a movie that I'm really gonna like always go back to and really think of when I do like like first come to my mind when I think of these Nickelodeon movies. You know, I mean, gosh, I mean, I w it does have some good things about it. Oh, this, like, well, hey, Ar the Hey Arnold movie really just did not really have the elements of what really made the show so enjoyable. This movie really does. I mean, this movie really does, like, have some of the elements that really did make the show enjoyable. It really does have a lot of the elements, and, you know, just, it did actually feel like the show, basically. As far as how I felt about the Wild Thornberry show, I mean, I liked it. Yeah, I'd probably say it's probably one of my 20 favorite Nickelodeon shows ever. I mean, it, it really was an adventurous show. I mean, I have the Thornberry family. There's the main character, Eliza. There's her sister, Debbie, and her parents, Mary Ann and Nigel. And they also look at, they also have, like, the an adoptive boy that they took in from Monkey's Donnie. And Eliza also has her chimpanzee friend Darwin who travels with them also. And the premise of the Wild Thornberries, they always just... Yeah, they just travel all around the world, world for Nigel's like nature show he has on TV and Marianne Films. And as they journey all around the world, Debbie is kind of like the estranged one. She really is not happy with the lifestyle that her family lives, and she really wants away from it. Yeah. yeah, well, Eliza, she does try to actually set into the lifestyle, and she just journeys he's off into every location that they go in, along with Darwin and sometimes with Donnie. Yeah, I mean, Donnie is kind of like... Sometimes he tags along with Eliza, sometimes he just stays with Debbie in their convy. Yeah, and plus, yeah, Donnie, he's like, he just, he doesn't actually talk at all. All he really does is just make, like, monkey chattering noises, because, as I said, Donnie was, like, raised when he was really young by orangutans, because his parents were... In, were killed by some poachers that were trying to uh, kill an orangutan and Donnie's parents saved the orangutans. Yeah. So after Donnie's parents died, the orangutan took Donnie in and raised him when he was real young and then Donnie was eventually came across the Thornberry family and then they took him in. And yeah, Donnie all really only wears like some leopard kind of shorts. And as I said, all he does is really just chatter, like, with monkey talk. Yeah, and also, of course, Eliza has her special powers of her being able to talk to animals. Also, yeah, in each episode of the show, Eliza always talks with different types of animals, whether they be, like, tigers, orangutans, elephants, birds, monkeys, I mean, yeah, just every kind of animal Eliza is able to talk to, but she has to keep her her ability to talk to animals a secret and not tell anybody or else she would lose her power to talk to animals. And so she always talks to Darwin, of course. And yeah, Darwin, of course, does travel along with Eliza on all her adventures There's when they... 
they go out out in journey for each, each location that the family family stops at for Nigel's nature show. And the parents, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're kind of like, one is kind of like a more realistic parent, Marianne, the mom. She's kind of a more, a more realistic parent. Like, she does actually really act like a mother and really just does try the elements of an actual mother taking care of her kids and everything. While Nigel, he does act the same way. He's kind of like the more, not really stupid, but more gullible and cheerful one. I mean, he really never does get get really angry or anything like Nigel he's like really all cheerful but at the same time he's also like really gullible and always kind of like when Debbie ever whenever Debbie does make like a sarcastic comment Nigel takes it seriously and yeah he's just like always cheerful and really just yeah he just really doesn't get angry at all so yeah Nigel's really the more cheerful one but yeah the show I did like it yeah but, as I said, this movie, uh, it's just okay, I mean, like I said before, it does have the elements that really did make the show really enjoyable, like, the family is still traveling around for Nigel's nature show, Eliza is talking to animals and journeying off, so, I mean, this still does have the elements of the show, but, I mean, oh, some of the choices they make, it just really messes this movie up. I mean, it has, like, a bunch of, like, pointless characters that really are just so under like underdeveloped and really we really don't need and plus it also has some subplots that really just didn't need to it didn't need to have I mean they could just cut this and this movie probably would have been a whole lot better so I mean yeah this movie like it has like the premise of this movie is Eliza really wants to find a baby cheetah that was kidnapped by poachers and she's just trying to find the poachers that took the baby cheetah and save it and with all that's going on, like, like we see like a bunch of like pointless characters throughout this movie. I mean, I could just like go through like all the characters that are just so pointless and wasted and just really had no reason being here. I mean, there's like Nigel's mother, who's of course like Eliza and Debbie's grandmother. And at first they do kind of make it seem like she's the villain because she suggests just to send Eliza away and then once Eliza tries to come back, the grandmother tries to just bring Eliza back over to the London where she was sent away. And, but then like it just shows that really, like she doesn't try that at all, all after like coming back to the family. Like she's really not... It really doesn't seem like she wants Eliza to really come back over to London. I mean, it's just like, it's just such a wasted subplot and premise. And plus, like, when Eliza does go to her new place to stay, which is like a boarding school, I mean, she barely has any time in there. And plus, like, all of her classmates are just so pointless. There's, like, her roommate, who's kind of like the hands-off kind, where she doesn't want her stuff touched and really just not interested in Eliza. Eliza, and then there's all, like, a bunch of Eliza's boarding schoolmates. It's who are wasted. I mean, we barely see them at all, because Eliza hardly spends any time at the boarding school. Well, she just, like, goes back, tries to go back to Africa immediately. So, really, we didn't need the stuff with Eliza being sent to boarding school. I mean, they could just cut this, and everything would have been fine. I mean, like, this movie probably would have been a whole lot better if it was actually, like, stick to its main premise, but we gotta sit through a bunch of these subplots. And we also have... And there's also, like, a bunch of animal characters that are wasted. There's, like, the cheetah mother, and then there's an elephant... Eliza's elephant friend. There's, like, some... Natives of a tribe that Debbie comes across that are pretty much wasted. There's, of course, the grandfather for Eliza and Debbie, who's, like, the grand who's the grandmother's nephew, I mean, he's wasted. I mean, there's just, like, a to a bunch of characters in this movie that are just so freaking wasted and don't have any reason to be here. And, you know, just, you know, all the... Yeah, and like I said, the subplot with Eliza being sent off to boarding school and Debbie coming across was that tribe, and she, like, takes an attraction to one of them. And there's also stuff with, like shaman who's who was like the one that really gave eliza her power 
to talk to animals. And, you know, we have, like, some scenes with him in this movie, and he hardly even appeared in the show at all. I mean, he always appeared in the opening of the show, and we also had the episode of the show, The Gift of Gab, where it was you know, like a flashback episode show to really tell the story of how Eliza did get her power to talk to animals. I mean, he was in that, but I mean, how many episodes did Shaman actually appear in, like, at all? Because I really cannot remember a lot of the episodes. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff with, like, Shaman, talking to Eliza in her dreams and all that stuff and yeah it's just really like a, a really waste of time really it just really has no reason to be in there and yeah just a lot of really pointless stuff in it but I mean for what they do have in this movie I still do think it does make it like okay like there's still like some good things like I said does have the elements of what made the show good like Eliza still does talk with animals and she still sets off on adventures uh, has a really good big connection with Darwin Darwin and yeah still has like all the families like still have all their personalities that they have in the show so yeah there still is like some good elements of it but I just really don't think it is enough to really say that this movie really was necessary to make I feel this Wild Thornberries was made by the same animation company that made like Rugrats. And so maybe I think Nickelodeon thought that since the first two Rugrats movies really did pretty good, they felt that maybe they could do the same thing with Wild Thornberries by turning that into a movie. But uh, it just didn't work. I mean, as like I keep saying, if it had some of the if you like took out some of the subplots and really did like make the main focus being on Eliza trying to save the cheetah cub up and she just spent the entire movie trying to do that and we didn't have to go sit through a bunch of subplots with Eliza being sent to boarding school running breaking out and heading back to Africa and then her grandparents trying to bring her back to London and like a bunch of all that other stuff that I was talking about earlier if you took out like a lot of that and just really made it be set on Eliza trying to find the cheetah cub and save him from the poachers this movie probably could have like been really good but since it has all that stuff that was really just wasted and doesn't really have any reason or like premise to really be in this movie it just really doesn't really make the movie feel that necessary to do and it just really makes the movie feel okay so yeah I would probably give this movie I don't know two and a half stars out of four yeah so I'm not really sh yeah this movie it's not really in connection with the show I mean the show was like just going yeah this was like when the show was starting its final season so yeah the show really didn't last that much longer and yeah the movie really has no connection with this show like the Rugrats movies do well the first two Rugrats movies and then like I, as I said the Jimmy Neutron movie was kind of like a pilot for the show so yeah this movie really has no connection with the show it's really just like a standalone so yeah I think I've talked about it enough so yeah let me just get right into it so the movie actually opens up with kind of like a similar opening that the show had just Eliza really explaining and her family and what they do and Eliza's power to talk to animals uh, and yeah it's showing that that Eliza and Debbie's grandmother is visiting the family and just kind of journeying with them through Africa. And I, <laughs> yeah, since she's Nigel's mother, she, he really like doesn't like the idea of Nigel hosting a nature show, and she wants the family to settle down. Um, but yeah, Nigel still does like his lifestyle of being a nature show host. And it's showing that Eliza was playing with some cheetah cubs, and the cheetah mother is leaving Eliza in charge, and she's just she just told Eliza to just stay in their boundaries and not go beyond the area. And after Eliza accidentally goes beyond the boundaries a little bit, 
It then shows some poachers arriving and one of the cheetah cubs, Tally, ends up being kidnapped by the poachers. Eliza tried to save Tally from being taken away, but she wasn't able to do it and the poachers got away with Tally. And then, Grandmother then just talked Nigel and Marianne into agreeing to send Eliza off to boarding school in England, since the grandmother felt Eliza was a danger in Africa, since she was endangering herself and it would be safer for, for Eliza to stay someplace else out of the wild. And, like, as I said earlier, like, Debbie wasn't happy about the life that her family has, and so Debbie was upset that Eliza would be able to get away and have another lifestyle, and she wouldn't. And Darwin wasn't happy about Eliza, Eliza being going away, and so it just showed Darwin, like, running off, and we didn't know where. And then it showed Eliza then being and shipped away to the boarding school with her grandmother. And when Eliza arrived at the boarding school, of course, like, everybody there was, like, laughing at her and just really not talking to her. And as I said earlier, her roommate, Sarah, was, like, kind of like a hands-off telling Eliza to stay on her side of the room. And it also showed Darwin had actually, like, snuck into Eliza's luggage and traveled into the school with her. And one night as Eliza was, like, sitting down at dinner, like, some other schoolmates were just sitting with her, and Eliza was telling them stories about what she does in the wild. And it showed Darwin was, like, disguised as a student to sit with Eliza. But Darwin eventually did get discovered, and then, and a whole food fight broke out. And then Eliza ended up getting in trouble. Darwin ended up being locked up in a barn, I think, with a horse. And the headmistress just told Eliza that you know, her grandmother would be disappointed when she finds out what Eliza had done. And that night, Eliza had a dream from I mean, with Shaman, and you just told her that she had to save Tally. Really? Then Eliza then agreed to uh, break out of the school and, and head back to Africa. And so Eliza then just persuaded Sarah to help her get back to Africa. And she just bribed her telling her that if Eliza goes, then Sarah would have the room to herself again. And then Sarah agreed and then got Eliza two tickets back to Africa. And yeah, Eliza broke Darwin out of the barn and then they headed back to Africa for like on a train and a plane and stuff and as they were on a train back to the their family's camp Eliza then saw like a rhino that had been shot and injured and then as Eliza and Darwin went to help the rhino you know, the rhino told Eliza that he actually got shot by the river then Eliza and Darwin came across a couple, Sloan and Bree Blackburn. And, yeah, she, they were, like, supposedly, anim, like, conversationists for animals. Well, and then, it's, like, as they're trying to save the rhino, Eliza, like, noticed that they had the same knife as she saw that the poachers who took Tally also had with, kind of like, an eagle blade, or an eagle handle, rather, on the knife. Yeah, and after, and then Eliza and Darwin just headed off to their camp. And then, like, the grandparents arrived back at the convy with Debbie. And, and then the grandmother then just said that she planned to bring Eliza back to the boarding school. But, yeah, it's just like, after they got back at the convy, the... Grandmother, as I said before, she just really didn't seem like she was really obsessed with bringing Eliza back. She was just like, she was like staying at the convy with the grandfather and Debbie, but like she really didn't do anything. Even after she discovered that Eliza was still, you know, around in the, in the 
forest. I mean, it's not like she was really, like, trying to really bring her back. I mean, this movie probably would have worked more if, like, with the grandmother, if she would have actually been, like, the villain, the main villain of this movie, and, like, she was actually, like, trying to set up a plan to take Eliza away. Hey, so the animals would be vulnerable or something like that, but, it's, yeah, as I said, the grandmother, she's just, like, a pointless, wasted character. Yeah, and... Yeah, and, my, and I, Joel, and Marianne also end up leaving Debbie at the convict to take care of Donnie as they head off to film, like, a herd of elephants that are heading towards the Tempo Valley during an eclipse that happened that night. And then, yeah, Eliza and Darwin eventually arrive back at the Convy, and they were trying to find a location of where Tally was. And they eventually get a location, and yeah, Debbie also ends up discovering Eliza and Darwin, and then she uses it, like, was just talking to Eliza about why Eliza gave up the chance for her normal life. And, yeah, she was just wanting explanations, and then Debbie Dar... I mean, not Debbie, Eliza, Darwin, and Donnie ended up just locking Debbie in a cage and just ran out to find Tally. And then Debbie... then... and eventually got out of the cage, and then went out, went out to search for them. And then she then came across us, like, some... A village with some natives that don't speak any English at all and Debbie ended up like finding a meeting a boy Boko or something and then the other village people then just end up sending Boko as Debbie's guide through the jungle because they felt that Debbie may end up getting killed in the wilderness And eventually, Eliza, Darwin, and Donnie then, like, came across a gorilla, and the gorilla told them that people actually built a fence across the Temple Valley, and they eventually find Bree and Sloane again. And then, then, like, Eliza then realizes that the poachers are actually after the big herd of elephants that are traveling through the valley. And as Eliza, Darwin, and Donnie are staying with Bree and Sloane in their RV, they eventually do f actually find Tally in the RV, and then they realize that Bree and Sloane are actually the poachers that did kidnap Tally and shoot the rhino and are also building the fence. And then, after then, Bree and Sloane end up just capturing Eliza, Darwin, and Donnie and just tied them down in the RV. And then they also reveal that the fence they're building is electrified and that they, they plan to just have the elephant just stampede into it and just kill them and then they can and harvest their ivory tusks for some money. Yeah, and then Sloane threatens that Eliza will never see her family again unless she tells Sloane how she actually found out about the rhinos in the fence. And then Debbie and Boko eventually came past the RV searching for Eliza and Donnie and Darwin. And then, yeah, Tally ended up like freeing Eliza from the ro ropes. And then, and like during all that, like Darwin and Eliza are in an argument. And then Eliza just yelled at Darwin to be quiet. And then, after Eliza broke out, then it showed Sloane was, like, like just hoisting Debbie over a cliff down that was had a river, like, really far down. And he threatened to throw Debbie over, for unless Eliza does, does reveal how she knew about the plan. And then it just... 
forced Eliza to basically just admit her secret that she can talk to animals. And then, then she then a huge storm just started and it just blew everything off. And yeah, Boko was blown away. And then the, and Sloane and Bree end up escaping after riding off. And then, yeah, since Eliza did break her secret, then her power was gone. And then, yeah, she was unable to talk to Darwin anymore. And later on, then, just Eliza uh, told Debbie how she really got her powers and was keeping it a secret the whole time. I mean, since, like, she couldn't talk to animals anymore, she couldn't even apologize to Darwin for their argument. And, yeah. and then after Debbie then learned how much Eliza's powers meant to her and that Eliza gave it up to save her, then they end up, like, making amends, and then... And they ended up making it to where the elephants were heading, but Eliza was, didn't feel that she really could save the elephants without her power to talk to animals. But Debbie then just told Eliza that even before Eliza did have her power, she was always willing to help animals all the time. And then, like, Bree and Sloane then, like, had their henchmen, like, detonate some explosives throughout the valley to get the elephants to stampede into the fence. And Eliza tried to, like, get the el elephants to stop, but of course, like, she couldn't talk to them. Then Eliza just threw a necklace that her father gave to her at the fence, and then it caused the fence to react to the necklace, and then the elephants all just ended up stopping and turned around. Um, and, and as Bree and Sloan were trying to get the elephants to still stampede into it, but Eliza remembered like how she could actually get tell the elephants where to go, and then she tapped with one behind the ear, and then just had made the elephants stop right in front of the fence. And then Sloan decided to just grab, take Eliza, and he swung from a ladder in the helicop helicopter and just grabbed Eliza and threw her right into the water. And as that's going on, like, the elephants are able to actually pull the helicopter out of the sky. And then, yeah, then Eliza ended up being saved by Shaman, and... Since Eliza did use, use her heart to save the animals and not her powers, Shaman ended up giving Eliza her power to talk to animals back, but it was under a condition that was later revealed. I'll get to that in a minute. And the poachers are, end up being arrested by the rangers that Eliza's family summoned. And then, yeah... Eliza was reunited with her family, and then she made men back with Darwin. And then as Boko was about to head back to his village, he gave Debbie a gift, as a gift which was a watch. And then Eliza then... And gave... And gave Tally back to his mother, and then, yeah. Later on... On, on, like, Eliza then did reveal to Debbie what the condition was, and that Debbie needs to keep, keep Eliza's power to talk to animals, or else she'll turn into a baboon. And then, like, of course, Debbie wasn't happy about that, and she ended up just scaring a bunch of baboons that were on Nigel's nature show. And then it just caused, like, the baboons and the family to all dance, and then, yeah, and then it just showed that that Eliza was allowed to stay with the family and not get sent back to boarding school. And yeah, I just ended with Nigel giving one more message and all of them dancing with the baboons, and that's how it ended. So yeah, as I said, two and a half stars out of four. I mean, yeah, it could have been a lot better if we like, didn't have all the uh, pointless characters and unneeded subplots. But for what it has, it is still an okay movie. So... Yeah, if you do like the show, you will probably just enjoy this movie if you can get past all the unneeded stuff it has. 
has. So, yeah, if you want to check this movie out. Alright, so that does it for my review of the Wild Thornberries movie. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.